Hello everyone and welcome to the BWC Online Bible Study. My name is Amy Hollis and we're reading through the Bible a chapter at a time and then we're coming back together to discuss the things that we've read. We are in Colossians chapter 1. We've made it really far guys. We've been reading um, quite a long way and so if you're reading along that's great and if you're not no worries. I hope that this just gives you kind of like a starting point like you listen to the message today and um, God will begin to kind of work on your heart to where you want to pick up the Word of God and be Begin to read on your own. Um, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about Jesus being the center today. Um, Pastor Moffat's given me the opportunity to be able to preach the message on Sunday morning, and I'm really excited about that. And so I'm going to talk about a little bit about what I'm going to talk about on Sunday, but um, but we're going to focus on Colossians chapter one. So um, Paul and Timothy are together and they're writing this letter to the church of Colossae. And um, so that's where you get the name of the book Colossians from. And so as they write this letter, he starts off telling them how he's, um, how he's praying for them and how he gives thanks for them. And I really liked the part where I'm going to read it to you. It says, we always pray for you and we give, and we thank we give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and your love for all of God's people, which has come from your confident hope of what God has reserved for you in heaven. And you have had this expectation ever since you first heard the truth of the good news. So some of the places that Paul had written to were places that he had been, but this church that he's writing to is a church that he heard about from someone else. A guy named Epaphras had, um, had told him about this church at Colossae. And, um, man, to be that kind of church that like, that it would catch the ear of the apostle Paul, that it would catch the heart of Epaphras. Like we want to be that kind of church. We want to be full of that faith and full of that goodness and full of that love to where, we're the kind of church that um, that someone would hear about and that someone would um, would you know hear about our faith and hear about our love for Jesus and our love for people and um, want to come alongside and want to invest in you know see that's what the Apostle Paul was doing the Apostle Paul wanted to pour into them when I say invest I wasn't talking about money I'm talking about he wanted to um, he wanted to pour knowledge into them because he had heard about their faith in Jesus you know when it comes to um, when it comes to this relationship with God, you know, you're watching the Bible study. It's not about you having a relationship with me. It's not about um, me having a relationship with you, although that's wonderful. That's such a blessing for us to get to have a relationship with each other, um, to encourage one another and to come alongside one another. But the real focus should be our relationship with Jesus. It's you having a moment with God. You hearing a word or a message from God. Um, God beginning to touch your heart and change your life. And, um, and you know, me reading this word and being able to not just hear it, but to apply it to my life. Um, and just the hope that Jesus brings um, to each and every one of us and that we really need to make Christ supreme in our lives. Like I was listening to this song early this morning and I, I posted it on the online Bible study page. Um, Jesus at the center of it all. You know, sometimes we get so wrapped up in um, what we're doing and what our goals are, what our thoughts are, what our opinions are, um, that sometimes we forget to put Jesus at the center of it all. Right now, the world is so full of just um, strife and disagreement and um, I think this and you think that. And, and really, the solution to all of that is to put Jesus at the center. Because when you put Jesus at the center of your thoughts, when you put Jesus at the center of your decisions, when you put Jesus at the center of your words that you speak, um, there's going to be a lot more love in them. There's going to be a lot more kindness in them, a lot less selfishness, um, and, and more compassion. And so, um, so putting Jesus at the center. And so I'm going to read, this is like a little poem that's kind of written in the middle of, um, of Colossians chapter one. Um, 
and it's a really a beautiful description of who Jesus is. It says Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. Um, he existed before anything was created, and he is supreme over all creation. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we cannot see, such as thrones and kingdoms and rulers and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. He existed before anything else. He holds all creation together. Christ is also the head of the church, which is the body. He is the beginning, the supreme over all who rise from the dead. He is the first in everything. For God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ, and through him God reconciled everything to himself. God made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. You cannot get to God without Jesus. Jesus is the center of it all. The whole Old Testament, all the laws, all of the, all of the prophecies, everything, the whole focus was to get this broken world and this broken people made right by Jesus Christ. Jesus is the center. And, um, and when we choose to make Jesus the center of our life, see, God is a gentleman. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He's not going to force you. You bow your knee to God. You allow Jesus to be what you think about. You allow Jesus to be in your words before you speak. Um, because God's giving you a free will. He doesn't force you to love him. He doesn't force you um, to choose him. He wants you to put Jesus at the center. He wants you to love him. It's just like with, with your kids or with your spouse. You know, you want them to love you. You don't want to force them to love you. You want them to love you because they want to. And that's what God wants from us as well. He wants us to choose him. And, um, and we don't have to choose him. We, we could choose all these other things, but, but when we do choose him, the, the beautiful relationship that grows, the benefits that grow, the fruit that comes from, from having relationship with God, it has eternal blessings. Um, you get to go to heaven when you have a relationship with Jesus. When you've asked Jesus to be Lord of your life, your eternity is affected. When you choose to teach your children about Jesus and they accept Jesus as Lord of their life, then their eternity is affected. Generations are affected. Lives are changed when we put Jesus at the center. And that's what I want to leave you guys with today. You know, Paul did this work, um, in the church proclaiming the message of Jesus. And, um, and so as the church, um, if you're a believer in Christ, you know, you may be thinking, well, I don't go to your church. That's not what the church is. Um, as the church, it's every believer that's ever believed in Christ from, from beginning to the end. Um, all of the believers in Christ make up the church. So, um, so, when we choose um, to make Jesus the center of our lives, when we choose to spread the message of the gospel, when we, um, when we choose to put Jesus first and, and tell the world who he is, then, um, then like the Apostle Paul, we get to proclaim this message and, um, and share the love and affect people's eternities and, um, and affect generations with the love of Christ. And so that's what I want to leave you guys with today. Um, Colossians chapter 1, Jesus at the center of it all.